essential we try to provide a platform for people like yourselves who have a message for humanity. I think we all have a message for humanity. It's just that some of us have got our uh, voice turned up higher than others. So plus of people ask, what is the true message then? Or the message is one of individuality. It's to look within yourself. They're keeping the, the message alive and they may inspire a lot of people. We're, we're living in a, in, in, in a, a world that is not like it was meant to be. Life is not meant to be a bitch and then you die. It's not meant to be that. And, uh, but you'll find that there's a niggling feeling in the back of your head that says, I just really, really, really want to know what the truth is about life and what my purpose is here. The fundamentally important thing is to know who we are. And that's what we're not about. To know the fundamental reality that who we are is the biggest secret. What are we? Who am I? Am I only a person? was a date from birth, living in a place, earning some money, was a profession, or am I something more? No one is ever a guru, no one is ever anyone that can give you the answer. They can help you find your own answer, but you need to walk through that door yourself to find out who you are. It's not about getting it, it's about seeking. saying I'm not a teacher, I'm a pupil from the life. We can learn a lot of things from each other. And sometimes, perhaps, you can teach something. What can you teach? First of all, that we all are making a journey. Every single journey is very personal. And what, I'm, what I do in my work is very personal to me. Uh, we are here in this reality now because we chose to be. It's something I've really noticed amongst um, those of us who are on this journey of art and communicated with this kind of information, like you, like me, like David, like Bill Ryan, Project Camelot. We're all part of a big team. We're all working together yeah. to get this message out there. And the one thing I've noticed amongst all of these people is this profound spiritual orientation. Every significant presenter of information in the realm which you and I and we are operating in Many, many other we're working as a huge team. Um, Project Camelot, David Ike, our friends David Wilcock, Alex Collier, George Green, a whole bunch of people, including people I don't even know. They all have a profound spiritual orientation, every single one of them. And just in this time, I feel that spiritual persons have to open the eyes and the ears from human beings. What is happening here on the earth? But there's something going on. They, there, and, and, and we and you and a whole bunch of other people who are watching this movie right now are busy trying to figure this out. What is that here? So a lot of people are mad or sick. Or I am mad and sick. Or the rest is sick and mad. And then we need to help each other. Since I was a little boy, I, I saw a lot of bullshit around me. Uh, that's probably the best word to use, is bullshit. And I was growing up seeing rules and regulations that are just existing to try and hurt us into one way or another. We live in a fundamentally controlled reality. We're very technologically dependent. We exist in a very, very controlled way. We're lied to ever since we're, you know, we're, we're lied to, controlled, manipulated from the moment that we're born. And we think that we're the most advanced race on Earth. And actually, you know, we're really the most primitive. Just because you've got fancy toys that do things that you seem like magic, it doesn't mean that we're working at an advanced level of spiritual ability. It just means you've got fancy toys. It's far more controlled than ever we understand up, up to this point. We have to know, first of all, that this is one piece of an agenda, of a program. Humans are kept in a tiny box by suppression of information, suppression of, 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 of knowledge, uh, and uh, many other means. And what's the program? What's the agenda? From who is the agenda? Who's doing that? Why? And for? 
within the financial system, like any pyramid of uh, control, and that's what I think uh, where evil truly lies. It's in the pyramid hierarchy system where everyone has to follow the order of the person above them. So the corruption is inherent. If it comes down from the top and suddenly control a lot of people, hundreds, thousands in the, in the corporations. The base from the agenda, you have to look in a totally other way than education has given you to the university. Because university, what are they learning? Unus means in Latin one. Vertere means direction of the one. Universities destroy knowledge and religions destroy spirituality. This is where we're at here. So we're not talking about believing anything. You have to get above all of that. And when you're above all of that, looking down at the whole thing, then we are discovering really a conspiracy. And I know a lot of people is laughing about it. The media are writing this uh, market. I don't know what they say. They don't know what the market is. I'm tired of war. I want war to stop now. Well, there's no mission. We know it's all about bond steals and making money and uh, interest on bank loans. And it's all the money. Yeah. And we need to start questioning why our leaders, why the royal families of the governments have such an interest in perpetuating and giving us this illusion that warfare is carrying on and exists. I said, because, you know, there are good people also in the military. I said, yeah. He said, they do, we do a lot of good work there. And I said, mm -hmm. I said, you know, there's something about military equals war, equals death and destruction, equals good work that I'm having a little trouble with. What is a conspiracy? In Latin, con means together. Spiring is collaborating in spirit, but I don't do it in spirit. They do it for matter, for ego, for their closed mind system, for money, for power, for even on the level of our solar system to have our solar system. But who are they? We are coming to a point where the world is going to have to recognize that there is a, a massive uh, non-human extraterrestrial uh, presence uh, around this planet, in this planet. So, don't think that we are only here on our Earth with living beings who are human. These guys have the same human. 2,000, uh, let's call them dark ones, running the show, commanding how they want things to unfold on this planet. Behind the, uh, the ruling human bloodlines and behind the, the human structure is actually a non-human force that's orchestrating all this. Our planet is in big problems because the little group, which we know as the descendants of the Nephilim, the Watchers, the clay tablets that speak about the Watchers, they were interbreeding with the women of our Earth. I found more than 20 sources about this history. Scientific sources, not UH stories. They are forbidden knowledge on the university. Ladies and gentlemen, many of you have been watching the news recently about that big strange crop circle that appeared in the sky above Norway. Please believe the official story by the mainstream media. <laughs> I, I went to uh, Washington State, uh, to Arizona, to Santa Fe, to Amsterdam, to Sweden, to, to Zurich, where we are now. And, and I've just been not, well, you know, uh, there's this extraterrestrial thing, but I, I won't talk about it because, you know, people might think it's crazy. And I've just gone for it. Listen, 
Reptilian entities operating just outside of visible light, the frequency range that we can see, are manipulating this world. I mean, you've seen it. I've gone for it. And what's been the reaction of the people? It's, it's not been what it would have been a few years ago, which is, what? Guys, bloody mad. People are now encompassing this. And I keep meeting more people who um, have had uh, access to the inside who, who are now coming out saying, uh, the, 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 the reptilians are a theme. They are a theme. They're coming up over and over again. There are people who've been who've encountered them. There are people who've 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 been contacted by them. There are people who've had experiences like Barbara Lamb had. There were shape shifting experiences. In our most recent interview with Jordan Maxwell, bless him, he came out saying. David Icke should not be persecuted for what people perceive as being his crazy ideas. He is absolutely right in what he says. I've had the same report. Because it's this uh, non-human control system that is behind the control system that is behind the Obamas and the, and the Bushes and the... Um, the uh, parent human leader. Unquestionably, I agree with David that we've got uh, a bunch of reptilians at very high levels on this planet. The council say there are 2,000, basically 2,000 of these little hybrid guys running the show. It's certainly very real for me that there are reptilian entities who are operating behind or operating within senior figures who are influential in this whole chess game that is modern geopolitics. The real big players, they're not running, they're not in public offices. Mm -hmm. These guys are just on their knees in obedience to the program. The reptilians that I would like to call the Anunnaki, these guys are the extremely wealthy, the ruling class. They don't come out. They just run the show. And the people that are out there are puppets, chosen for their Ability. You know, when you've got people like Ronald Reagan, a B-movie actor as president, it really sums up the post. They're actors. They're, they're there to um, bring into the public arena in changes in legislation or actions like declaring wars what has been decided um, in the background. And, and they're just there to, um, to, to make it happen. They're not deciding anything. In fact, Ronald Reagan... If the world didn't get the fact that an actor played the president of the United States, and heralded it as the best president of all time, which quite honestly, I don't think so. Um, you know, we, we look at presidents uh, uh, and we think that they're the people in power and they're making the decisions. They're just the, the interface between uh, the power system and the public. That's all they are. Because really, you know, we humans, we're suckers for a great act. If you've got a reptilians who are smart enough to take over a human body in whatever metaphorical way you can imagine, they might stand behind them in another dimension, there might be there might be what is called a walk-in, where they say, okay, out of here, I'm taking over this body. If you regard these beings as having the 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 ability and the strategic capability to figure out, okay, what position should we occupy on this chessboard? And they are going to be occupying positions and they're going to be occupying people. It's absolutely logical if they could do that, they would do that. Um, and they look like a human, but they've got a, but they've, but who they were before that was something completely different. This can happen at any stage of one's life. You don't have to be born in here. That may happen with politicians, it may happen with bankers, it might happen with industrialists, it might happen with UFO researchers. In theory, if we don't watch our backs, it could happen to you and me. The, the power of these uh, extraterrestrial gods is the power of arrogance, not in the wholeness of the universe, not in the acrodance of love. They don't come out. They've got their circuit, and uh, they walk to a different drummer. They operate through mind, they operate through a program, they will do whatever is expedient, they will do whatever is practical, they'll do whatever is in their own interests, and they don't have any empathy, they don't have any sympathy. Um, we have to be concerned about them from the point of view that they are orchestrating the One World Order, and by nature of that orchestration, 
they are throwing the planet into as much chaos as possible. I could tell you what they do, but I'm not going to because I'd fall apart. And people thought these guidance, these Nephilim, the sons of God, which sons, which? They think that is a story. That's a mythology. It has passed. No. They have interbreeded the human race, violated it, because our destiny was and is always to develop us in love and light and immortality, not attached to a body, to a material body. We were always in a light body. We um, were in a, a, a very different physical form, much less dense than it is now. This great experiment involved creating a race, or a, let's say a race, of beings that could be light beings in body, walking light beings, who would be able to be the guardians of the entire three-dimensional plane. And that was what Homo sapiens was intended to be. This is why the concept of being 12-stranded light beings comes into play. We were designed with 12 strands of light of DNA. Um, another long story how that evolved into two. So they took human being in a material body more and more and more and more and more. They changed the DNA. Even the scientists, scientists from uh, Richmond are telling now stories that the junk DNA that's more than 97% from our DNA, is containing extraterrestrial materials. They don't recognize it from our eyes. They don't tell it to the university. Forbidden knowledge. You know, 95% of human DNA, scientists call junk DNA, because they don't know what it does. Well, a fundamental part of that junk DNA, I mean, I mean, well, are they saying that the creator of, of this human body originally um, said, OK, we'll put 95% of DNA in there and it won't do anything, but that will confuse them. No, it, it was there to do something. So they changed our DNA, they changed our body, they changed our senses, they changed our way of looking by the third eye. They changed everything. Uh, there has been massive manipulation of human genetics uh, to stop us perceiving what we used to perceive. They want to isolate us in the five senses. Because what, what do we do? When you're in the five senses, what happens? You, you, you're you looking at five sense reality to get a fix on five sense reality. And how do you get a fix on it? Information. Where does the information come from? Education system, media. Who controls that? The control system, there's this saying, um, in, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. This reptilian group is the one-eyed man. And um, what they uh, 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 have sought to do, and they've done it brilliantly up to this point, is they want to make humans blind. There's an agenda from Genesis, Genesis, becoming, to the time we are living now, apocalypse, that means unveil. We are going to see the truth, the truth that we have had mountains of lies. People is going to awake. These reptilian entities, if you if you look at some of the real ancient accounts, they talk about these reptilian entities um, living among them, and then suddenly they weren't living among them. So what do they do? Where do they go? What happened? If you at one point had a much wider frequency range of visible uh, uh, experience. You could see far more. Then what if these entities were within that range? What would they do? They'd live among you. What if you then manipulated human genetics so that you could only see a much narrower band of frequency and experienced awareness? Those entities are still where they've always been. But you can't see them anymore. We have not only forgotten, we are manipulated. 
to forget these forms. Churches, political systems, bank systems, material conditions, education, knowledge. They have only one aim, and we think, uh, okay, that is not an aim, uh, they, they forgot it themselves. Yes, it's their aim, their agenda, that you forget everything, who you are, what you are. This is why we've got this um, constant cradle-to-grave uh, process of uh, implanting the belief that we're little me, we're Joe Public, what can I do? I have no power. Um, it's a constant mantra through your life, and it, it, it's, it's kind of underpinned in endless different ways. Um, and it's to keep us uh, in the, the myth uh, that we have no power. This is why it's very important not to fall into the trap which we are intended to fall into, of believing this illusion that we are small, mortal, powerless, temporarily animated hunks of meat, then when it's all over, then that's the end. And in the meantime, we've got to fight for survival and worry about how we're going to feed ourselves and clothe ourselves and keep warm. The thing is, the, the, the power is with humans, but only when, 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 when humanity understands that. We're all powerful once you realize this true nature of, of, of what humanity is and, and, and what we really are. We are not evolving. We're recovering. I think this is a profound misapprehension in much spiritual teaching that we are somehow evolving from, from amoeba into some spiritual being. No, 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 no. We were all gods. We started off as gods. We're all, we're all in a fallen state, you see. We're all godlike beings who've forgotten who we are. And so we're getting it back again. We're recovering. We're, we're, we're clawing ourselves back out of the mud hole, washing ourselves down, getting all the stuff off us and remembering who we were. So it's a recovery process. It's not an evolution at all. An evolution is to discredit who we really were because we started as gods. You see. It's a fundamental orientation that is missing, in my opinion. either believe in God or spirit or the prime creator or you don't. If we speak about God, that's not a personal image on a throne governing with a big eye and looking to everyone. God is the word synonym for love, total intelligence, total being, immortality, always there. Here and now. The, the God really messes us up because it gets all that religious implication and people are just nuts over the whole religious bag and I'm not into it. So I like to talk about prime creation. And for me that is the absolute intelligence, which I like to think of as the great architect. All the churches, nearly all the churches have tried to, to, to take people small, little, sinner. Your destiny is uh, hopeless if you have not a church. You have to believe in our God. Which God? The God of projections, the God of power, the God of lands, the God of banks. This is all a matrix. Spiritual beings are free from every religion and every system. Yeah. If you have just one life and then an afterlife, if you are uh, going to church enough and uh, feel guilty enough and that you might end up in heaven, that has been used as a power tool. And churches have been doing an uh, enormous amount of suppression, actually. There was a lot of suppression. If you do what we are saying, you are going to heaven. If you don't do, you are a sinner, you're coming in hell. They learn to people, you have to believe, not to know. If you know, you don't believe. If you know, Gnosis, you don't need the institute. Because you know, you are not dependent. Church had Inquisition, Crusades. They had the, the fire staples. Constantin, the fire status. They killed, you know how many people? Professor Kuhn, a Catholic 
theologian said in his book about eternity that the Catholic Church killed about 60 million people. You know, also Stalin did that. Mao Zedong did that. You really think that in other sort of systems people are going to a church or a mosque or a synagogue? That's for the children on the earth. And I, I don't want to say negative things to them. Absolutely not. In London, we have entered a police state. The whole city is like a big prison with cameras and police and everything monitoring you all the time. Because for some reason they seem to want this control over humanity. There seems to be a very subtle spiritual battle between good and evil going on. Between the controllers and the creative human beings. It's a dialogue that's going to go on. And you need to ask yourself, what will you do in this dialogue? What will you say? What will you add to the world? Because if you just keep your head down and just accept things the way they are, they will be a lot worse for your children. Behind the scenes here, there is an invisible game going on. I won't use the word war. It was a confrontation, literally, from the power of the watchers of love and light, Christ. It is a force. It's not something from a foreign from church. Churches have changes every single what is the truth. And it was the confrontation from the power of arrogance, the Luciferian power, with a lot of evil watchers who wanted to have this planet, who wanted to have a war in our solar system, a star war, like some presidents in America and other presidents are preparing just now in our time. And it's not a, a struggle, a battle only in our hearts, it's a struggle in our solar system. Oh, great, we can make a nice video game out of this. It's quite without wanting to offend people whose children uh, are losing their lives in war games. It's time for war to stop. It's really time for it just to stop. You have to see this whole thing as a chess game. And a chess game can be played out in many different, many different ways. I know this sounds altruistic, but uh, I'm tired of the whole war game concept. Why do people keep going, signing up to go die? I get this. It feels important. It feels it's like we want to win or we want somebody else to win if we're watching the game. But it's just a game. Everything's a game. The patriotism concept, is that really why people go do this? Truth is, a lot of boys go to war because they can't get a job. They're promised some semblance of survival. If they can make it through the death fields or the theater of war, they get some kind of stipend and they can go to college. And in some cases in the States, they can get their citizenship. Hello? Yeah. Huh? All you have to do is survive the potential of dying. And if you die, well, thanks a lot. Coffee shops in Amsterdam. We cannot have free thinking people enjoying themselves and being peaceful anymore. It's very important that Holland, just like the rest of Europe, only allows alcohol and cigarettes. It's much better that everyone gets drunk, ends up getting very angry and fighting. This way you will stay scared and support the economy. By staying drunk and angry, your children will join the armed forces and go and fight terrorists on the other side of the world. We would like to thank the Dutch government for providing troops for Afghanistan. Those terrorists are very real and very naughty. The only two places in the world where terrorism can be organized are Iraq and Afghanistan. So thank you, Dutch government. Thank you, Dutch royal family. Thank you, British royal family, for sending the children of other people to go and fight and die in a desert very far away. This is why fighting doesn't work, because fighting continues the game. We've been fighting for millions, billions, trillions, possibly quadrillions of years. Um, and all that does, it just prolongs the game. And so this is a variant of what Einstein said, that a problem can't be solved by the level of consciousness which produced the problem in the first place. It's got to rise above that. And this is why, and, and, and the application of that in the situation is you can't solve this problem on planet Earth by being a human being, just being a human being because that's the level of consciousness which has created the problem. You can only 
you can only resolve this problem from a spiritual standpoint. My, my view very, very strongly is that this control system is coming down. It's not coming down tomorrow. It, it, it's going to, for a few years, it's going to seem like all is lost, but it's coming down. To understand why it's coming down, we have to understand the, the nature of this reality. It appears solid, it appears physical, it's just an energetic construct. The prime uh, level, the prime state of this reality is vibration. We are decoding vibrational information into electrical information, which the five senses then pass to the brain, and the brain is constructing this uh, apparently solid reality. It's just a holographic illusion. All this stuff is, is provable. I mean, the Matrix movies went into it, uh, the, the illusory nature of this reality, and, and, and in its basic theme, the Matrix movies were absolutely spot on. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not listen to us. We are just a bunch of people trying to hack the Matrix. When you look at uh, what science says about the, the, the mass matter that exists in this universe, uh, they, they talk about the fact that the vast, vast, overwhelming majority of mass matter in this universe, we don't, can't see. The five senses are only accessing a tiny frequency range we call visible light. Uh, and outside of that, we, we can't see it. Uh, it exists, but we can't see it. It's like a, a cat will react to empty space, or empty space to us, because the cat's got a wider visual frequency range, and therefore it can see things within this universe that we can't see. So ima imagine you've got the, um, the virtual reality universe as a whole, <clears throat> and then something's hacked into it. In the same way, in principle, as the Chinese government firewalls off Chinese computer systems so the Chinese cannot access enormous tracts of the internet that the rest of us can access. This virtual reality universe in its entirety has been hacked into. Well done, carry on, and thank you for not questioning your reality. And when you see all these um, ancient accounts about the manipulation of human genetics and interbreeding with non-human entities and all that stuff. That's part of this hack. They, these human bodies, they're like, uh, like computers. They're body computers, that's what I call them. And they allow consciousness, our awareness, to interact and interface with this reality. Just like we go on the internet through a computer, so we go on what I call this cosmic internet, through the body computer. And what's been what's happened with this uh, genetic manipulation is they firewalled off this body computer's ability to perceive, decode, experience great chunks of this virtual reality universe that humans used to access once. And if you can control the mind and you learn people that they are not conscious, love, right? immortality but you learn them they are only a personality and you educate them you are an ego you are important and you don't learn them the real spiritual essence and you give them poison that's right and you can give them also poison in the food so to stop us getting out there they throw many things at us one level of the receiver transmitter, the body computer, is electrochemical, right? It's an electrochemical organism. So look at the stuff they put in food in terms of chemicals. Um, that's destabilizing the uh, receiver transmitter on that level. It's destabilizing the, the body computer. You can give a person and the information. For instance, this power can buy the media. And people are thinking by looking to television, that's the truth, because television is saying it, and the journal is saying it. Mostly, not always. It's lies. So people don't realize they are under control from a long, long, long system, 
with one destiny to control totally human being and to take them in personality so they can be a good slave. Because this energetic hack firewall has in effect put humanity to sleep. of infinite consciousness um, uh, temporarily experiencing what it's like to be here with our feet on the ground trying to figure it all out and what we're doing is we're playing games we're just playing games and that doesn't mean there's anything trivial about it but what else is a spiritual playful being going to do in all of eternity apart from to play games uh, it's a good way to learn let, let me put it this way uh, for now this is a virtual reality universe um, it's like a, a, a fantastically uh, complex or not even complex but sophisticated advanced computer game you're looking, you're looking at a virtual reality game and that's why it doesn't matter but when you and I are playing a virtual reality game on our computer if we do that we're going to see the 2012 movie we'll be feeling this in our body viscerally. and when you, you see it in those terms it becomes more and more blatantly obvious that there has been some devious manipulation here um, electronically, our minds are influenced on a physical level, our bodies are compromised. Uh, it's about categorizing, cataloging every human being on the, street, on the planet. Why? What are they so afraid of that they need this information? And, and now we come to the key. The microchip. The microchip. That You know, microchip is about electronic tagging, yes. But its main reason, I was given chapter and verse about this in 1997 by a CIA scientist who's proved to be very, very accurate with the passage of the years. He, he was the one that told me that in 1997 they had uh, microchips that were so small they could be injected uh, through a hypodermic needle in uh, vaccination programs, you know, uh, and that, that was the plan. So that's 1997 he told me that. But he was saying that it, it, the microchips are not just about electronic tagging. They're about external manipulation of the body physically, mentally, and emotionally. And he might have added vibrationally. Um, so the, uh, the, 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 uh, the idea is to get us microchipped to suppress this awakening and destabilize our ability to, to, to uh, tune into these, these changes and, and access the awareness, the insight, the, the inspiration that these energies uh, contain. Um, so that we stay in the box. If we try and spread a message of peace, this does not help. We have to use the mainstream media to sell you messages of warfare and terrorism to keep you all terrified of the Middle Eastern Osama bin Laden Al Qaeda boogeyman. Yes, he is your devil. Stay very scared. No, it's not your government. So as long as you stay scared, we can use your children to go to war, to fight these Taliban up in the mountains and all these Al Qaeda, which were created by the CIA anyway. You've been programmed to believe you're powerless, and that is. We will keep you safe. Uh, just sign the dotted line where you give up all of your rights. Uh, Homeland Security. Oh, yes, well, it's to keep you safe. <laughs> um, oh, airport x-rays where you can see my private parts. Well, it's about safety. And people have bought into the safety thing to the throat. And guess what? I don't think you can keep me safe because you are the problem. <laughs> what a gag is this? So their agenda is now coming in a point of... Uh, we are going to reach our aim. We create a climate conference. We are creating a world crash on economical uh, situation. And people are thinking, oh, it's going very bad now with the economy, the economical situation. There are so many things happening at once at the moment. So here we are, we're being pressed to the max. Uh, almost, it's almost comical. Were it not so grave, it would be comical if you think about it of how uh, the powers that be are manipulating the planet. But everything, they have manipulated. It's so clear. You have only to look to the great banks. Manhattan Chase, City, Goldman Sachs. You want to know some more names? Everyone is knowing them. J.P. Morgan. They have the power of the money. But they have not the power of love. One has to think the way that they think. These people are very clever. Everything that happens is for a reason. 
and there may be a whole bunch of misdirects going on that are causing us to feel and think and worry about and maybe react against this thing over here and something very quietly is happening over there. And we need to be smart enough to try and anticipate what these games are. And once again, I use the word game advisedly because we have to see it. We have to see it that way. Perhaps there's a lot of fear on our planet, a lot of suffering. The negative force of fear is immense. There is definitely a plan to drive us into fear, because fear makes us easier to control. The nature of fear is, if uh, if you if you have that much fear, you can never believe you're safe, even yeah. if somebody's saying, we'll make you safe. Because True. it's all about bringing that fear to such a gripping level that people are just disempowered. You have nothing to fear. When we stop being scared of things, we stop being aggressive. Well, that is a risk. Life is, everything you do is a risk. When you, when you catch the bus or you, you, you take your car to go back to where you're going, it's a risk. When you get in a, plane, in a plane to go back to Holland, it's a risk. When you commit yourself to your husband um, or, or to, to your partner, Richard, it's a risk. By publishing this, this video, it's a risk. Life is risky. You're never going to get out of it alive. No more reason to be scared of any terrorists. It was all invented by the CIA anyway to keep you scared. But now you've got something else to be scared of. The economy. You've got swine flu. So stay scared. Very important. You're easier to control when you are scared. Thank you very much for staying scared. Please carry on shopping. The economy needs you. Guess what they say. When I ask, what is your real fear? predominant fear is not being good enough, not being loved. And I think, how bad is that? How sad is that? Where did we go wrong where we stopped believing that we were lov lovable? Where? Television. Media. You're never thin enough. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is an announcement from the Institute of Advertising and Propaganda. We will continue to use very sexy naked women in all our advertising to make you buy more. You're never rich enough. You're never cool enough. Well, like the media, Hollywood, all the advertising from L'Oreal or Chanel, you know, Paco Rabanne, like all these stunning, naked, beautiful, young, waif-like, 20-year-olds, like, you look like me, you smell like me. You're never smart enough. You're just not enough. Because if you are, you can't be marketed. You can't be marketed into buying product. Do not smoke marijuana, it might make you very happy. And we can't have happy people because happy people buy less products. <laughs> big thing that um, is the psychological soil upon which all the other cons and myths and illusions are based and that is teaching people to fear death. Oh yeah, <clears throat> that's, well, that's one of the amazing things. When you really understand your own immortality, there really is nothing to fear. The fear of death is so ingrained in the human psyche. This is the biggie. If you can grasp it, we've been taught in Western culture particularly to put death over there and we run about our busy activity lives never ever thinking about that until we lose someone we love or we get sick whereas in some of the more evolved civilizations like the Mayans the ancient Mayans like the Tibetans lived to celebrate that passage you can lose your fear of dying and that's actually extremely liberating the worst thing that could happen is is you'll die and if you do, you'll be all right anyhow. But if you don't die, you'll just walk through one conscious fear. And each time we step through one conscious fear, a thousand and one other fears that we're not even aware of fall away with that. You're here for a hundred years on this planet. You're just visiting through the 3D physical world. You're an infinite being. You're one with the ultimate consciousness of this universe. You are the universe's way of understanding itself because you're conscious. So don't worry. Death is about as scary as being born. Buddy, you have to lose it one day. But you are a spiritual being. A spiritual being. Do you hear? You are a spiritual being. Whether it's death, whether it's ascension, 
What's important is for people to understand that each of these is simply a process, a transmutation, a transformation of energy. And that how could you possibly be afraid if you know that you don't die, you don't end? This is the trick. Let's look at the bottom line. What's the worst can happen to any of us? We die. Uh, okay, so what does that mean? Our infinite consciousness leaves this body computer which uh, acts as a lens that locks us into this reality. We leave the body computer and suddenly we are um, infinite consciousness and awareness of itself, capable of extraordinary things as near-death experiences have described many times. Um, that's the worst that can happen. Cool, cool, I'm shaking. Look, look at um, so it's time for us to let go of all those fears and by letting go of them, understanding, as I said yesterday, guess what? You may not find your partner in this lifetime. You may not have success in a successful career. So then what? What are you going to do with this day, with this life? People need to deal with their personal fear so that they can then face all of the garbage that's coming at you, at us, and face, with, face that fear. To then get on to, okay, now that that's cleared out, that I've at least looked at it, now let's talk about what I want to do, focused intention, what I want to do with the heart, what I want to be as a galactic human being, and how I perceive what I can be as an illuminated human being. It's not like, a, uh, Oh, uh, let me die tomorrow. Yeah? No, it's not game over yet. And it's good because you're here for a reason, hopefully. And it's even more interesting if you know your purpose while you're here. One of the most important things in life is finding what your purpose is. And it's one of the things that eludes people the most. Ask yourself, why am I here on the planet? Why do I do the job I do? Why do I communicate with the people I communicate with? What is the purpose of it? Are you just a consumer? Are you just a man in a suit who puts on fancy clothes and goes to work in an office? Is that what the pinnacle of your life is? If not, you are the change you need to see in the world. Every last one of you. So it's about the why. I think the why, that's where you find it. The reason why you need to find out more about who you are, rediscover your strength, look at your past, meditate, do whatever processes or techniques are appropriate for you to remember why are you here? Because you're here to do a job. And, uh, but you'll find that there's a niggling feeling in the back of your head that says, I just really, really, really want to know what the truth is about life and what my purpose is here. And that's an unstoppable force of consciousness. We are all consciousness personified as 3D space. It's about deciding that you will not stand for the status quo, that you will make a difference at whatever level that is, and then you start. Find your talents, we all have gifts, develop them, move out of fear, and ask to be in service, the rest comes. We are here on the pilgrimage to the last free city. It's not a fixed intention to do this, and I'm locked into this idea. But it's a purpose, and we all come here with a purpose. And when we're on that purpose line, then it no longer feels like work, it feels like a joy. And I loved it in the last interview when you said, I know that joy. When I said that it's a lot of sacrifice, and it can be dangerous, or whatever the word I used was, but the joy is immense, and you said, yes, we know that joy. So you too know what it means to stand up for what you believe in, and speak your truth fearlessly. Indeed. Holland and Amsterdam are the last three places in the world. And now the riot police have arrived in all their free armored cars. It's important that our positive messages are shut down immediately. Do not forget who your masters are. Your masters are the police. And everyone's got a life plan. You think you came here without a plan? You've got a plan. Everyone's got a plan. Everyone watching this video has got a plan. It's smart to know what your plan is. If you don't know what your plan is, it's only because you haven't remembered it. And the way to figure out what your plan is, is it's not really a question saying, oh, I remember. You will recognize it 
when it comes to you. And one of the indicators of what your plan is, is because it gives you energy. You start thinking about it, and it's like, wow, I really want to do this. We can't have young people thinking for themselves. It's very dangerous. You might not want to get a job. You might not want to spend 10 hours of your life every day in a glass and metal cage, working for a big boss, putting a suit on, moving paper around, photocopying, looking at a computer screen. This is the pinnacle of human evolution. Do not question it. You are just a machine in the overall machine. And you exist as a worker drone in the beehive that is the matrix. Whatever it is that you feel drawn to do at this moment, then that could be what it is that you're here to do. Be smart, be careful, check things out with people, be aware of all the tricks you possibly can do, but follow your instinct. If you spend all your time trying to think it out logically, you're not going to get anywhere. You've got to jump off the cliff. The angels will catch you because the angels are real. There's more to this life mm -hmm. than just uh, going to work and die. Work. The word work is a relatively modern word. And what it really means is something that you don't want to do. Animals don't work. Animals just exist. In the Marquesas Islands, which is a, a group of French islands in the South Pacific, in their language there's no word for work. They catch a fish, they light a fire, they build a hut, they shelter from the rain, they go hunting, they sing a song. They don't work. Why, do, why are we working? We're working because someone has got an idea of how we should structure this. We're, we, we don't work. We live. And I used to scare them into taking out insurance. But it paid well. I had a good lifestyle, but I was only living half a life. Because yeah. I dedicated half my life to the glass and metal cage that is the office. And then I got ejected by being made redundant, which uh, means I, I lost my job because of the economy. Yeah. So the best thing that ever happened. Even the people that are losing their jobs have this opportunity. You have an opportunity when they lose the job to say, what am I going to do now? And I see people doing things like you. I see people things, doing things like, well, I always wanted to be a musician, but I always had to worry about making a living. Uh, I'm going to be a musician. Or I'm going to create a new community, whatever. I'm going to start a, a community vegetable patch. So in despair and in difficult times, we have opportunity. And the positive ones say, let me make this day special. And the not so positive ones are, why does this happen to me all the time? It's the all the time that gets them, of course. But I would like to also have people think about that. In difficulty is opportunity. People are on the way to 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 realizing something that they want to do. I'm so caught up in the, in the matrix and control of the system that I earned my bonus, I earned my salary, I had a nice flat. But I thought that was real. I thought that was the best way to do things. And then you can kind of learn more about what's going on, and you just get a little bit more. Active, I guess, and trying to fight it. Oh, great ocean wave. <laughs> oh, flowing breeze. Oh, great palm tree. Oh, nature. Oh, sand. Oh, it's only two o'clock. <laughs> oh, what am I going to do this evening after the sun goes down? Oh, moon. Oh, starlight. Oh, day one, ending. Oh, day two, same tree. Beautiful water, love the dolphins. Day four, when are they going to come and get me off of this island already so I can get back to life? Don't you know that this is true? Think about it. I'm at my happiest when I'm at my most active. And the definition of happiness, which I use for myself, is not like, ah, now I'm on a cloud and I'm happy and I'm sitting with a, you know, metaphorical gin and tonic watching the sunset. That's boring for me personally. Happiness for me is a direction. It's a dynamic process. It's being on target towards something that you, that you 
that you want to do or you want to accomplish. What we're trying to do is, is lower fear and just raise the general love vibration of the world. We're called the Love Police and we work in London and we do spiritual videos. And one thing we like to do is to go around the world and hug the people in authority. Yeah. I just wonder if I could please no. give you a hug. No. Why not? No. I don't like it. You don't like it. What we try and do is to lower fear and raise love. And we, we work a lot in London hugging people in authority like police or security. So just wondering for our spiritual channel if I could please give you a hug. No, it's not allowed. No. Not allowed. Not allowed. What would happen if I gave you a hug? We will arrest you. For love? Yeah. For giving you a... Yeah. For holding you with affection? Yep. Yeah. And what about you, madam? Would you... No? Well, why? Why? Because a lot of the time in London, the police say, yeah, it's, we'll arrest you. We don't want to give you a hug. But it's about lowering the public's distrust. Because a lot of people are scared of the police. A lot of people are scared of authority. So I just think it's a beautiful way to connect people. Try somebody else. Maybe you'll get me on one. All right, I'll try some more. Yeah. Like, but, but you guys seem nice. You've been smiling. So. <laughs> but do you know any police who, are, who would give me a hug here? I don't know. Or is it yet, difficult uh, to say? Each one individually, yeah. yeah. So would you really risk me if I gave you a hug? Yep. This foolishness has got to go. So we've got to join, band together, and we need people in every community, in every country, with the courage to love. There's the word. The courage to stand up. Oops, that's where we lose a few people. But Patricia, they'll put you in jail. Yeah, I've only ever really had the total courage recently to come out and make myself known and speak up against the, the system I see, which is kind of holding people back from what they're meant to be. Have you actually ever been arrested yet? Five times, yeah. Five times? I went to court last week. Go away with for it, what? what? For what? using a megaphone yeah. outside Parliament, the British Parliament. So really? They got arrested very violently. Put in the I, I didn't realize that was a crime. It's not a crime, but they, they have a law that they, they can arrest you and take you away. It's called SOCPA. Right. Police act within one kilometer of Parliament. You're not allowed to protest without permission. And we tell them that it's not a protest; it's an expression of ideas. And they arrest us anyway. But went to court, pled guilty, said it was me. I'm proud. How could it possibly be against the law to speak out against the killing of people? And they let me go, unconditional discharge. So. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. I want you to remember something that I like to quote. And that is, the movie Ben Hur. Ben Hur. Ben Kingsley in Gandhi. How many of you saw it? Yeah. What a movie. Do you remember the scene where he is refusing to carry the national ID card imposed on the Indians? And they're beating him to death. And his peers say, Gandhi, they will kill you. Do it, take it. And he says, with his little bloody arm, they can break my bones. They can break my back, but they cannot break my spirit. And his arm goes up on that flame and he throws the card into the fire. I hope you have ID on you because the legal requirements carry ID with you wherever you go. Really? You oh, I don't have ID on me. Oh, okay, well, well tough. We need okay. So let me get this straight. You're walking around as a human being. From 14 years of age. From 14 years of age. Yeah. And you need to have a piece of paper, a plastic card, to prove who you are. Uh, yeah. It sounds really the people died in the Second World War. So we would yeah, we'd have to like, be yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, numbered. Yeah, yeah, numbered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. You may be called to be that brave. And only you can answer that question. <sighs> Never underestimate the power of the human spirit. That's my message. And sometime in this unfolding of reality that we're in, you might have to get out of your comfort zone. Comfort zone where nobody gets ruffled and everybody's quite okay with it. The neighbors don't know that you are a New age hippie. <laughs> and life is just fine. Some of us are brazen warriors. But not everybody has that mission, and it's okay. But somewhere along your path, you're going to have to stand up for what you believe in. Otherwise, you're a con. What do you think that people uh, can do in their own way uh, to do great vibrations and contribute positively? Hug as many people as possible on a daily basis. I say make a lot of love and uh, spread the general good vibes. And when you see authority figures like the police or private security, try and challenge them in a loving way to expose the illusion of their control. It's just they got given a uniform and signed their name on a piece of paper and suddenly they work for the Matrix. If you jump off the cliff, the angels will always catch you. But you'll never know until you jump.
Yes, very true. And they have caught us. We've yep. been very, very blessed. Absolutely. So it's got something to do with trust. It's got something to do with courage. It's got something to do with daring to believe that you can be all you can be. The thing is, the, the, the power is with humans, but only when, 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 when humanity understands that. They are taking people to the frontier of the personality. And you are making, yes, 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 we can, we can, we cannot. We have to awake. And we can awake every moment. Make yourself free from the chains of slavery. And let feel your strength from consciousness. We are not slaves. We are divine children. And they never, never can kill us. Never. If they kill me, I don't care. I'll just come back. It doesn't matter at all. You know? Um, I like the line in Star Wars where Obi-Wan Kenobi says to Darth Vader, if you kill me, I'll be more powerful than you can ever imagine. I see Sleeping Beauty waking up and going, what happened? Where am I? Yeah, it's pretty clear to me that there's a, a human uprising happening now. Um, not only among the so-called enlightened people. People are, have, have got their bags full. And even though there's so much uh, control mechanisms have been put in place to prevent any kind of rebellion, any kind of protest, People are out there anyway. Hold on. Yeah. You can actually speak up against bad things happening, and you're not really a human being unless you do, I believe them. Who are we if we don't speak up for the weak? Um, we're just, I guess, obedient. People can protest in the streets and, and, and do all that. You know, we, we should make make our presence felt, and, and, and there's many, many, many things we can do to support this. A lot of people is now awakening. A lot of people are seeing all the relationships between the media, between big pharma, between the industries, between esoterical uh, hidden knowledge which they have abused. Because esoterical tradition is something wonderful. If you don't abuse it, there is an awakening process happening. I don't understand it, but it is happening. Everyone we speak to, everyone... Uh, we meet when we're traveling. Everyone we talk to who's also been traveling and who reports back from conferences that they've been to, this phenomenon is happening like a wave. People are rising. Absolutely. And you look around the planet, it's, it's an intense moment on this planet. But never underestimate the power of the human spirit. And I've seen it. doesn't matter what the culture is. It doesn't matter what the background is. Uh, people are just waking up. It's like, uh, it is like a mass sleeping beauty uh, going on, you know. Cool, why didn't I see it before? And what's happening is this vibrational change was started to affect some people earlier who were more open, but now it's starting to affect and transform the perception of people who literally weeks ago would have said, that's bloody nonsense. Now it's like, it's perfectly obvious. Because what you're experiencing now is... Um there is an awakening going on, so try to make free everyone who is on this planet and the system of the matrix from political systems, religion systems, economical systems, education systems, knowledge systems. It's all planted agenda, all very old. And before you are becoming free and you have a little insight, it takes a lot of time. But if one, if one is carrying this insight, it's like a hundred monkey, huh? you know the story. It's going very quickly. It's a spark from fire, and a whole wood can come in the fire of love and insight. A lot of people talk about the 100th monkey effect. Have you guys heard of that? Yes, of like, you know, we. The story comes from these islands where a few monkeys learned how to open nuts or something. And they said that once one in a hundred monkeys had actually learned how to do that, then it spread across the world, or across the monkey world anyway. 
um, something they could all do it. So more people wake up to what's going on, they'll automatically not want to contribute to things which we find damaging. Warfare, poverty, hierarchies of control, these are things which you won't want to do because you'll see that they're not right and you'll stop obeying that pyramid of control that comes down and you go, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't quite agree with this. So as you say, the, the non-cooperation, if you get a lot of people to just not turn up for a war, I know that's a widely overused and like much ridiculed expression, it's but simple. it's so simple. And people didn't turn up for work and until governments said they turned good. And um, I think what we're all trying to do peacefully is to change the system peacefully, lovingly, and inherently. And um, it'd just be very interesting to see how the powers that be react to the challenge of, of their control. I hope it can be done peacefully, but we'll see. Everyone has their own touchstone their own seed crystal, which is going to start that process of reawakening themselves. There's no right answer. Your right answer might be, might be uh, an inappropriate answer or not such a workable answer for somebody else. I think everyone needs to realize that no one is ever a guru. No one is ever anyone that can give you the answer. They can help you find your own answer, but you need to walk through that door yourself. To find out who you are. Sue just came up and asked me about, I, have, I don't really get it yet. And my answer to her was, it's not about getting it. It's about seeking it. We all have to rec we all have to find our own answer. So be very careful with books or videos or messages or groups that say they have the answer. Um, the only answer really is that there is love and you have to do it for yourself. All you really need to know is infinite love is the only truth, everything else is illusion. That process of understanding, I think, is part of the awakening process. If people is becoming in awakeness, they're going to awake, awake to who they are, what they are. They are awaking from the lies, thousands of lies, thousands of lies. It's for weeping, if you realize. So much lies are on this world, mountains of lies and lies. The people is going to understand that. You cannot hide the truth. Impossible. The house of cards is held together by human ignorance. It's going to be brought down by human awareness and awakening to the true magnificence of who we really are. And they are shiting themselves as this becomes more obviously uh, manifesting in the world. In an attempt to keep us suppressed from becoming the, the full expressions of God and love of the universe that we are, vibrating at our highest level, being the multidimensional beings that we are. Yes, part of the intention, in a sense, part of the plan is for it to a degree to keep us from that awareness, from that level, but not really. It's to give us a hoop to jump through, a level to jump over, a new level of growth struggling through a learning experience to access something new so we can actually discover who we are. I think that humanity only really gets moving when we're pushed up against the wall. So awakening means also that we are going to awake above every form. And that's not for one person, a Buddha or a Christ, for everyone, everyone. If we think, oh, he, she, she's doing wrong. Everyone is having this intention of power of consciousness in him, herself. Let's celebrate, first of all, what we have been able to do in our, in our current bodies, in our current consciousness. If two strands can create such miracles, even to move a finger, the consciousness in that act is so utterly immense. And we are so often anesthetized to the greatness of our being by the noise and the clutter and the fear. Uh, it's like what we call the junk DNA. Yeah. Um, actually, I think it's cosmic DNA. 
and that should can be activated. It's actually happening right now. Many people suddenly began to see auras. I experienced this myself recently. Suddenly I could see it. Um, people will have um, becoming much more perceptive. perceptive. People talk about uh, people being in the box. It is a vibrational box, ultimately, that we're in. Because energy is consciousness, and consciousness contains information. Every, everything is information. All, all existence is about encoded information and decoded information. The more you expand your consciousness, uh, the greater level of information you access. It's like the library gets, gets bigger and bigger and, and, and more uh, sophisticated and knowledgeable. And you then can bring that down into this reality uh, to get a completely different fix on what we're actually experiencing compared with that, the five senses. At the moment, they are throwing everything at us to suppress this more than ever before because they know and have been aware of for a long time that this point of vibrational change was coming. Everything's crumbling. The old systems that you've mentioned are crumbling. The banks are crumbling. The government is crumbling. And yeah, they're, they're putting up a good front. It's like a last desperate surge to keep the sheep, that would be how they perceive us, in obedience. But now, as this awakening is happening, this vibrational change is happening, and, and people are beginning to o open their minds to it, now they have to throw everything at us because they're trying to keep the lid on something that's very, very blatantly beginning to open and, and the microchips are the, the, the jewel in their crown uh, for this suppression of consciousness, this suppression of uh, us um, going through this immense transformation. I have no doubt myself that this uh, blatant and actually rather pathetic attempt to um, vaccinate everyone on the planet with this swine flu vaccine I have no doubt at all that nanotechnology microchips are part of that. We have to realize a very good, if there are a lot of attacks on several levels, on humanity, on the sacred creature and creation, then we have to defend ourselves, but not defending with an aggressive tune or an aggressive attitude, but in a force of non-violence and truth. I think that this is their final big test. Are we able to bring the human race to, the, to its knees? Are we able to manipulate them to that point or not? And we need to help each other when the pressure really, really starts to, starts to crank up. And everyone that we know says it's going to get worse before it gets better. And I would agree with that. I don't know how bad it's going to be. I don't know what the timeline is going to be. I think it's going to get tricky. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the human race. I think it's the most amazing training course. And I think it's quite tough. And at the end of all of this, there's going to be something which we emerge into, which will be a wonderful new start for the human race. But between now and then, and I don't know how long it's going to be. I don't know whether it's two years or three years or ten years. But after that... I think that we will have emerged from all of this and there's going to be a fantastic recovery process. Um, I want to be around to see that happen because that really sounds like fun to me. The old has to go. It's a kind of global feng shui. It doesn't work. The age of reason is over. So go the priests, so go the kings, so go the masters who believe that they own this planet. One of the many things that will happen as this, waves of, as this wave of consciousness grows is that we need to organize ourselves into groups because together we will be stronger on a logistical, practical level. We have to, uh, we have to form communities. We need to form uh, collectives which are, which, are, which are able to handle things logistically simply because here on planet Earth, we're dependent on keeping our bodies alive. We need food, we need water, we need heat, we need shelter, we need protection. We don't need to have needles inside us. We don't need to have uh, uh, um, uh, things which are sprayed in the atmosphere through, through chemtrails. There's a whole thing going on. People are empowered. They look at what's going on. They understand it. More and more people understand it. And more and more people are not afraid of it. 
we may have a tough time, and some people may may have to drop their bodies and pick up another one somewhere, you know. Um, but that's not the end of the game, and that doesn't make it all into a disaster movie. It makes for quite a lot of drama and quite a lot of change and quite a lot of interesting things going on. Come on, man. Let's get off of our assets. Let's get out of the fear, and let's rise to the occasion of what humankind is capable of. Tyler Durden says in Fight Club, the things you own end up owning you. I can't believe you just said that favorite thing. It's great. It's Unbelievable. Great. In the biggest picture, after all this, there actually is the opportunity for the human race to emerge into what many, many psychics have seen as being, after all of this chaos, some kind of a golden age which will emerge. It's uh, an energetic change. It's an energetic shift that's going to take place because there are forces at work uh, that are in the in the in the uh, process of bringing this about, and this reality is going to change dramatically when that happens. So we have lived such a long time in the matrix, in the prison of the material factors. And now all the forces from love and light are creating the possibility to come out of this matrix, even to change our material body in a light body, even to change our DNA. There are a lot of forces of light coming to us. Let them laugh who say this people is totally crazy. Using whatever language you might choose. I'm a wanderer, I'm a volunteer, this is what I came here to do, I'm pretty certain. I know about the wanderers, it's a, it's a group of so, souls I think, who kind of volunteer uh, to, to, um, to be here. It's, it's, it's like they're keeping the, the message alive and they may inspire a lot of people to, to, to find a way, a way to a uh, higher consciousness. There may be an inspiration source for others. We are here in this reality now because we chose to be volunteers from all over the universe, different different dimensions, different planets, maybe different cultures even on planet Earth. It's like, okay, I'm going to try and help this movement here because these guys need help. There's no one on another level with a machine gun saying to consciousness, get in that body or I shoot. We're here because we chose. The thing to, we need to understand is the level that's now experiencing this is not the level that chose it. So, so um, we can get confused and say, I don't never agree to this. Well, the level of awareness that just said that didn't make the choice. You're experiencing the choice. I'm here because there's a good chance that this game is going to result in a good outcome. In the meantime, it's fun, it's interesting, it's a learning experience, it's a training course for you and me and everyone else too. I'm really pleased that I volunteered for this. So, I discovered in my own being that we are here on the Earth with a special destination. And I would say that collectively we made the choice, um, probably for many, many reasons, to unveil every lie which is plenty on this world. Plenty. But, but a major reason is we came to play a part in setting this reality free from the uh, the control system that has um, been manipulating this reality uh, for quite a while um, and we came to play a part in, in bringing that down um, and, and, and setting the place free. And all the wonderful children who are coming in, who they're trying to control with Ritalin and all these drugs and all these you know, I mean, all the, the Indigo children, the, they're coming in in waves and waves. The cavalry is coming. The little kids running around. The cavalry is here. These younger people uh, today, the children of today, the, the young people of today, um, these children that they call Indigo children and all the rest of it, although I think there's lots of people like that uh, uh, around now, they've come in to take this on when the system comes down. We have so many people saying, I know I'm here for a reason. 
I want to find out what I'm here for. I understand all this information. Your information has helped to wake me up. Your information has helped me realize that I'm here. You know, we get this from more and more people and younger and younger people. And, of course, we're working as part of a huge team. You're going to start getting these messages as well if you haven't already started to get them. And there are people working all over the world in different cultures, in different ways, and all of this is happening. It's a movement. It's a movement. Um, this awakening is actually part of, um, I don't know, a call to, as it was put to you a long time ago, as part of the contingency plan. They're here because there's a good chance, because it's fun, because we're working together, because they can reconnect with people who they've got an agreement to reconnect with. Many of us have known each other before. This is why I'm sure that since you started doing what you're doing, you've been bumping into people who you've only met for one or two days, and you think, my God, I feel like I've known you all my life. It happens all the time. And the reason for that is because they're not strangers, they're old friends. You have an agreement as part of the life plan to meet up and work together because this is what you've done many times before. And that really is the way that it is. And so that, for me, is one of the most important messages of hope that there is, that this whole cavalry wouldn't be investing themselves here if it was all hopeless. They're investing themselves here because there's something really valuable that could come out of this. There are a lot of beings here now with plenty of love and beautiful forces, not for power, but for helping the planet in a very, very difficult situation. And not only are the bad guys occupying positions and occupying people, the good guys are occupying positions and occupying people. Who do you think we are? At every stage on this spiral of light, there are beings lending a hand, reaching out, helping those that are climbing come up a step higher. We have to give what I call the children of the planet a lot of information for preparing on the spiritual side. Because we are spiritual beings. It's not about organizing people. It's about, it's about inspiring people to say, OK, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but what do you want to do? And if you want to organize a food co-op, then who else wants to help this person? Who's enthusiastic? The person whose hand goes up really quickly, they're the guy who should help this person. It's not about organizing people into a kind of militant army. It's about going, it's about allowing oneself to understand what it is that one is really, what is really here to do. The world is not against us. The universe is not against us. At the time, we don't understand what's happening. We think, oh, poor me. Why am I doing this? It's all part of the plan. As you, as you expand your consciousness, and you start, to, you start to access those levels of yourself where the choices were made to be here at this time, then you start to understand, because you've accessed that level, you then start to understand why you made the choice to be here. Just as many people watching this video and you yourself will recognize, that when you finally think, okay, now I've arrived at something which I really want to do, you look back on your life and you realize that all the experiences you had, even ones that weren't particularly pleasant at the time, were all part of the training program, which you choose, which you chose in your plans. Like, that's why I did this. That's why I did this. This is why I experienced that. This is why I spent the two years with this terrible person. This is why I spent a year and a half in this terrible job. This is why I chose this terrible parent or whatever, because it made me who I am today that helps me now with this resource space that I've got to do this job now. And you get this whole thing played out on this huge cosmic tapestry, which has got something to do with consciousness increasing. The consciousness needs to have information so that it's got something to process, so people can deconfuse themselves. The kids who are coming into this world think, what the hell's going on? Ah, now I know why I'm here. Now I know what the game is. Now I know where these chess pieces are. Now I know what to trust and what not to trust. And everyone's figuring this out. And that's all part of the learning because that's all part of their responsibility, individual responsibility, to, to, to utilize this training course and to learn what they can learn. It's not fixed to have a good outcome. It's not fixed to have a bad outcome. But it's a fascinating game. from a high enough place, you see that all of these things are, in connect, are interconnected. Even the nasty stuff. 
So we are in danger, but we have to realize that the dangers are not so strong as we think. If we are going back to our strengths, our spiritual strengths, they are afraid from us. But we don't like enemies, even if they want to be our enemies. We feel a very strong feeling from compassion. The bottom line, once you disentangle all of this mess that we've got down here at this level of reality, everyone is infinite consciousness. Even a nasty reptilian who eats baby. You know, they're infinite consciousness too. They've just forgotten who they are, just like you and I have. Maybe. The races of the snake gods have other eyes and the people of light. So let's have also compassion with that people because the spark of light is also in their heart, but they have forgotten it. <laughs> and I think that there will be polar opposites in the ET presence as well, because three-dimensional reality is polar. I think there will be light ETs and darker ones, but I just believe that light always prevails. You can change the outside world by changing your inner self, and if enough people together start changing their inner selves, we can co-create a world of peace and love and forgiving. We need to forgive our enemies the same way we would forgive our own children. If our own children did something very wrong, we must forgive the people who we claim to think are enemies. We are all one. We are all equal on planet Earth. And an eye for an eye will make the whole world blind. If we keep on fighting each other, then it will get us nowhere. You know, I feel even a very big compassion with them. Normally people make them to enemy. No, I have compassion with them. Because they think to know. They think to have the power. They think to regulate the solar system. But if in one second the power of life and love leave their body, nothing. And so there's room for compassion in this. This is where the infinite love thing fits in. See, there's room for compassion. There's room for realizing that 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 these guys might have a big problem. As long as we keep seeing bad and good, we are never going to evolve. Let's not transfer our fear now to the alien. Let's make the new terrorists are going to be the aliens, yeah. and the government's going to protect us against them. And on and on and on. Okay, we've got to stop this uh, bad guy, good guy scenario. Most people who do something that is antisocial or violent or nasty, they're just trying to solve a problem. If somebody um, holds you up at night, uh, at knife point down a dark alley um, and steals your wallet, they're just trying to solve a problem. If somebody bombs another country, they're just trying to solve a problem. If somebody takes over a planet, they're just trying to solve a problem. You know, if 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 your partner screams at you or throws a plate at you in the kitchen because they're upset, they're just trying to solve a problem. They're just self-medicating by, by doing something that makes them feel better. And so any bad thing that anyone ever does is, is they're trying to solve a problem. It's just that usually um, when these things result in a way in, in, in a negative effect on somebody else, it doesn't really finally solve the problem. It's just very temporary. It just feels like they're solving a problem. It doesn't actually end the whole thing. This is what karma is. Karma is trying to solve a problem in a way that creates another problem, creates another problem, creates another problem, creates another problem, and the whole thing never ends. You've got to lift yourself up to a higher level to realize how to really handle these problems, not try and solve them by reacting. It's very important to see that our journey can only continuate if we clean all the karmas those causes and consequences which are here on our planet in a difficult situation. There has to be a plan or a divine intelligence. If you believe in that divine intelligence or let's call it prime creator, I love that term, then by the nature of that, which would be the ultimate wisdom, the ultimate light, you've got to come to terms with the fact that the darkness exists within it. Because you can't get away with there's the ultimate goodness and light and then there's a completely separate reality, which is the ultimate darkness. You, it can't be ultimate if there's a separate reality. It either is the entirety of creation or it isn't. So I really believe that it is and that the darkness exists because without it, there's 
no free will. There's nothing to do. Great. So there's this massive, wonderful, incredible uh, light. What is the purpose of any kind of I am awareness? I think we break away from that, that we're all co-creators. We're all a spark of God, like creation. And we leap away to experience I am experience and plunge down deep into the darkest crevasse of uh, difficulty to know it and to bring back that wisdom to source. And that the whole time of this journey, returning back up, is filled with every opportunity of free will to choose between these polar opposites. It's funny, those of us who have come from the dark side think we see the most light. The darkest ones, which we have been once, are a spark of light. So is it a question of how evil something can be or how new it is on that spiral? If you, buy, if you understand that, and the council say, even you, as much as we love to think of ourselves as light beings, even you, every one of you, has at one time drunk of the dark wine on your long journey back. I really love that. And if we acknowledge that, we too have been at times... Uh, well, at some point, working for darkness, we so much more appreciate that we found our way up, returning home. Indeed. And that's how we forgive the reptilians. But this is where compassion comes into this, that rather than, 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 than fighting these guys, we've got to understand that they may be here because they're trying to solve a problem and they're trying to solve a problem in a way that might not be good for their karma and might not be good for us physically. Uh, soul archaeology, like archaeologists of the soul, which is kind of digging within yourself, finding out who you are, because of finding out who you are, you find out what we all are, and that is imperfect human beings who just want the love, who want peace, and we want to coexist with other people and co-create a better world. Love is universal, and that capacity that we all have as spiritual beings must never be forgotten. Remember, life is just a ride, death is only a dream, and you have nothing to be scared of. You are infinitely loved, and you are infinitely understood and forgiven, and every negative thing that ever happens in your life is a test. And if We are getting it, that there is really no separation. And that as long as you feel that way, as long as you see the other, uh, you're not working at the highest levels of consciousness. We can organize all the power of consciousness, which is one. It is one. It's already one. But we think, we think from the mind, it's diversity. You, 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 me. Thousands, millions, milliards, billions, trillions, etc. But it's one consciousness. As if we awake to what we real, really are, this consciousness, this is one. There is no other. As you, as you climb out of this illusion of separation, you recognize there is no other. You're it. We're all it. And so the other that we recognize now in separation is you sooner we get this, the easier it's going to be to bring this planet up to a much higher frequency. We are learning this from our own experience, our own evolution, which is at this moment just exploding, and from the guidance we're getting from other dimensions. You could say it's from angels, from uh, ascended masters, whatever that source is. Um, technology is the fingerprint of our consciousness, and the technology has grown so much, which has allowed us to become one global like awakening consciousness together like the internet is such a, an amazing way to communicate and um absolutely like is it coincidence that now at this term when everything seems to be going a bit crazy we have the ability to connect all over the world but this is why we need to use the internet so much whilst we can because who knows how they might try and control it in the future because they end up controlling everything that they want to because that's their aim it's our role to Try and stop that. And all of this is against the backdrop of a whole bunch of nasty people who may or may not have lost their planet an awful long time ago who are trying to control us because they're frightened of the power that we have as infinite consciousness. So blessed people ask, what is the true message then? Or the message is one of individuality. It's to look within yourself and realize that only you have the answers to your life. 
not the government, not the police, not the taxation, not the mainstream media with their messages of fear, fear of communism, fear of terrorism, fear of, fear of swine flu, fear of the economy. It's to keep you at a lower vibrational state. And when you are kept lower, and when your vibrational state is reduced, you are more compliant, you are more obedient. The truth is, you the people have the power in this world. Every single one of you outnumber the bad people about a million to one. And we have the numbers. And if we can get at least one in a hundred of us monkeys to believe that peace is possible and that everything is okay, then we can start inspiring people. To put the message on, don't believe me. Do what you have to do. Fear, lack, and limitation is an illusion. Fear, lack, limitation, illusion, separation. Everything either comes from there or it comes from here. Love, prosperity, oneness, unity, light, abundance. Or you're going to the inside of the little spark of divine light, which is always there. And you open your eyes. Or you destroy yourself. So infinite love is all there is. When you get out of fear, you move toward love. Follow love, follow happiness, follow light, and the darkness will fade. Hold that line that we are infinitely capable, infinitely wonderful, infinitely beautiful spiritual beings. And all else is illusion, drama, and play, Maya. Then you can handle it. Because it's like, okay, you know, it doesn't feel very nice, but it's just one of those things in a dream that just feels a bit, yeah, you know, and then you move on. It's the only really way to handle it. And always remembering that no matter what is the drama, the theater of war, or the play that we're watching in, it's just a phase. We go from this density to another density. Or we go to another, on the reincarnational wheel, we leave this one, we go pop into another one. <laughs> As we are connecting as individuals around the world, I think people just need to, another cliche, be the change they want to see. And uh, by doing that, if you want a loving world, then project love, lead by example. It's not, you can't just tell people to be loving, you have to actually love yourself. Infinite love is the only truth. The existence of one infinite awareness is the only truth. Everything else is illusion, these illusory realities that we decode into physical when they're not. I wouldn't be anywhere else doing anything else at any other time. It's a fantastic time to be alive, and it's just the place to be. This is where the action is. We're on the cutting edge. And for anyone watching this who is wondering whether this is the right place to be, I defy you to think of anything else, anywhere else, that wasn't quite so much fun, you know, as right now. And the opportunity is to really make a difference. The rush of humanity, of spirit, the human spirit, is pouring through. And it's a very exciting thing to be part of. It's a very, very exciting time because um, we're living through extraordinary events that are taking place around us without us even realizing it. But those that extraordinary stuff is coming more and more and more into our awareness. And we're going to be perceiving and seeing and directly consciously experiencing extraordinary things, extraordinary changes. And I have to say, enormous challenges too. Bring it on. I'm ready for this. Whatever it is, bring it on already. I got introduced to ayahuasca, which is um, a very interesting cup of tea from the Amazons. <laughs> it has amazing properties. They call it the plant teacher. <laughs> When I uh, took a psychoactive potion 
for the only time in my life, in 2003. I had a fantastic experience. But this female voice talked to me as loud as mine is now for about five hours about the nature of reality. And it was hilarious. I mean, my legs were in the air a couple of times. It was, it was just painful. It was so funny. Because it was just um, laying out what a bloody illusion we live in. <laughs> and how funny it is that we take it seriously. Don't take life too seriously is one of my more frivolous messages. It's important though. We're just losing our sense of humor here. And especially the light workers, what's happening? We're getting all heady here. We're not having as much fun as we're supposed to have. It's supposed to be fun. Okay, great, it's a learning process, but I didn't think that at the soul level, I was just gonna come in here and work. I intended to have a great time. Let's get back to that. Don't be scared of making a fool of yourself. Don't be scared of making yourself vulnerable and making mistakes. We all make them because we're all on the journey of self-discovery. You couldn't make this stuff up. It's wonderful. That's my message a little bit. And perhaps people can do something with that. And if the day is coming that I have to leave my body, I hope to die with a smile. You're never going to get out of life alive. Life's a risk. So enjoy it.